Let's start with your name. John Sponsor. And what year were you born? 1934. How long have you lived in North Baltimore? All my life. And what keeps you here? Originally it was family. And I guess in recent years or later years, I never found any place that would sound like it'd be any better. <coughs> so you went to school here? Yes. What was that like? Uh, I never wished I was back in high school, but it was fun. I had fun while I was here. One thing about school, I can remember, I can name, I think, every teacher that I had. And I always thought it was strange that my two children, you'd ask them who you had and what grade, and they, they never knew. And I, then I got thinking about it, and I think it's because when I was in school, the same, especially grade school, it was the same teachers here, were here forever. And when my children are in school, they, they, they moved in and out of town a lot, which is probably what's happened to you. Yeah, some stay, but... Yeah, some but sleep. usually they all stay. <laughs> what kind of trends were popular in your youth? Well, most of my, you know, like grade school childhood was during World, World War II, so there wasn't much travel. But a lot, all, a lot of stores in town, we went up town to the picture show almost every Saturday night. People played cards, my folks in the evening for entertainment worked on coin collections. They go through coins, look at the dates. Work around the house. There wasn't a lot of and games. We we play cards. We play pinochle or authors or uh, rummy. Wasn't a TV. Listen to the radio. Listen to the Lone Ranger on the radio. Still, every time I hear the William Tell overture, I said, "There's the Lone Ranger is coming." <laughs> What kind of stories were you told as a kid? I don't know if I really told stories. I've read to a lot out of, out of books, you know, most about animals and uh, storybooks for, for children. Uh, there was a set of books that, well, like Winnie the Pooh was, was a popular one. And then there was also a series of maybe half a dozen books called Mother West Wind's stories, which were about animals, you know, then talked about them as people, you know, okay. that kind of thing. How has North Baltimore changed throughout your life? You, totally different. You can't even, it's, you wouldn't even say they were the same town. Huh? Re really changed. There was stores, every kind of stores. There must have been four or five grocery stores in town. There was three banks in town. There was a jewelry store, a shoe store, a furniture store, uh, groceries. There was an A&P store in town. You probably don't even know A&P anymore. They, I think they've gone out of business. Kroger store had a store in town. Worth's grocery store. Lemmerbrock's meat market. Uh, Everything. Go to the picture show on Saturday night, especially in the summertime. Uh, two shows are like one at six thirty or seven, and another in the same you know the same yeah. show after that one was over. And Saturday night in the summertime, there were so many people in town. You had to elbow your way out of the picture show to get out. The lobby was full of people <laughs> waiting to get in. <laughs> So, you know, and then we had a real nice family. He was a college professor. We moved here, he wasn't, they were from Rome, Bellevue or something. And they lived here a number of, hours, maybe 20 years. When he retired as a teacher at both BGSU, they moved back to where they had come from. And he told people, that if North Baltimore had been the same when I retired, I would have stayed here. It changed that much. 
that he didn't want to stay. Sad. Which is a shame. Which is it's a shame. Trains, railroads, it was all steam locomotives. And we lived on the north side of the railroad track and the school was all twelve grades were where the high school got torn down. And every once in a while, going to school you'd have to wait on a on a train. And they burned coal. And once in a while you'd get one of those cinders from the train and you're out. Boy, did that hurt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what major historical events have you lived through? World War II. Jet airplanes. Television. Korean War, Vietnam War, Centennial, North Baltimore, Centennial, the country's Centennial, been a lot, been a lot. And what big inventions came out when you were Television, I guess, would probably be the biggest one. Computers were later. I was growing by the time by the time that those came out. How has the world changed throughout your life? To, to, totally, about as much as North Baltimore has. Um, it seemed like when I was as a kid, it was the good guys and the bad guys. Mm -hmm. Today, you don't really know. You know, they're not. The bad guys aren't wearing all wearing black. Hats. So the good guys all wear white hats. Now it's it's you know it's kind of mixed up. And like in uh, especially the, the generation that went through the uh, Vietnam War, apparently they didn't know who they were fighting. Mm -hmm. What do you think North Baltimore will be like in twenty years? <laughs> uh, probably. Pretty close to what it is now. I think it's declined to where it's about hit bottom as far as I'm concerned, oh. and I expect it to stay there. I, I, we're, we're too close to Finley, and we're too close to the Interstate Highway to get back to where we were. It, you can, you know, and, and when I was a kid, and especially during the war, with gas rationing. You didn't really run over to Finlay to buy things like you like you do now. Now people can get to the shopping center over in Finlay in about 15, 15 yeah. minutes. And those days we had everything right here in town. Saturday night all the farmers came to town. A lot of farmers. Farmers would farm maybe 180, 360 acres. So there was a lot of farmers. Now these farmers are farming. 3,000 acres each, so there's not that many. There's, they're better off. They're a lot bigger farmers, but there's not near as many of them. So that there's, you don't have that group that wants to shop in a little town. And what do you think the world will be like in 20 years? No oh way. Eh, I want to get political. If we get another president like this, we might not even be here. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I don't, I, don't, I, maybe they'll finally come to their senses and decide we should all try to get along, but uh, I don't know. It's, it's heading towards, seem like dictatorships are kind of uh, on the rise. Uh, I don't think that would get too far. I, I, I think we'll be okay. I, I, I think we'll be okay. We get another election. 2,000 fellow bailers out. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> um, what are your personal hopes for the future? Don't leave my wife and don't leave the dog. <laughs> <laughs> the dog and I, you know, um, I don't think my wife would want to take care of him if I die first. Oh. He, at his dog's age and my age, 
I say we're we're between the dog and I we are having a race to the exit. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I try to stay healthy. You know. Yeah. And see the grandkids grow up and be successful would be the hope. Is there anything else you would want to say to the camera? Mm, North Baltimore, probably with all its problems. I can't. I can't think of any other place that I'd rather live. I like to visit other places. I like New England, but I wouldn't want to be up there in the winter. I don't mind our winters here. Our winters aren't really bad. Our summers aren't really bad. Uh, this area, you know, it's easy to get to Toledo. It's not too bad to go to Columbus. It's easy to get to Finley. Yeah. Uh, it's a little town, but we're pretty close to just about any, anything you want to do or get to.